This video will take you through the pros and cons of the four most popular ways to go full stack with Dart and Flutter. Even though we are talking about four frameworks, what Kevin Moore says in this clip is important to keep in mind. Obviously, you know, anywhere you can run a container, you can run Dart. It's pretty straightforward and we have support there. So you don't really need a package. Um, we tend to recommend people use the shelf package. Um, and there's a few other ones that we support, um, just making server apps easy to do. So as you heard, Shelf is one of the recommended packages by the serverless and cloud relations team. And this is the first option on my list. But before we continue, I'm trying out this new format where I talk about Dart and Flutter outside of a follow along tutorial. If you have any questions on Dart or Flutter or any topic that you'd like me to cover, leave a comment on this video. So the first option is Shelf, a package that makes it easy to create and compose web servers and parts of web servers. It's what my favorite Dart backend framework is built on. It gives you control over many parts of the server creation process. This package is not really beginner friendly and there's a lot of knowledge you need to have about the server creation or backend development in general to make use of this package. Some of the pros for this package are that it's maintained by the Dart team. This gives us some reliability that it will be technically well built and crafted and stable in the form that it currently is. It also gives you the most control out of all the options on the list. It gives you control over the way your server will work and how you'd like to organize your project and file structure. The biggest con, which is basically the only one and a deal breaker for me, is that there's no guidance and learning resources. There's no clear way for a non-backend or server developer to really learn what it's about by just reading through the docs. In fact, there's actually no docs. There's no docs that even give you an intro into how things should work. This is why I made the comment that this is for experienced developers only. So Shelf is the most manual package that we have and everything else becomes less manual as we move forward. The second framework that I wanna talk about is the dot functions framework. For a good summary, here's Grant Timmerman from the serverless relations engineering team at Google. Uh, so what is the functions framework? All right. Well, first it's a open source set of libraries that allows you to write uh, your, func your code as a function and deploy it on a server. So you write a simple dot function and the framework handles the server parts of it. It can be deployed to any Kubernetes based environment and is extremely simple to use. Jumping into the first pro, it has typed function signatures. This is how a function endpoint looks. The greeting request is a class that serializes to and from JSON and the functions framework parses the request data to fit the shape of that greeting request. Not only that, you can also return a model and the framework will turn that into the response with the body as your returned object. You can still return a normal HTTP response as well using the response clause if you need to add additional custom attributes to your response. The second pro is that it's extremely simple to set up as well as deploy. The Google Functions and Dart team has put a lot of effort into making this as seamless as possible to set up and deploy. This con is kind of similar to the shelf package and there's a little bit of a pattern with the packages and the frameworks that's maintained by the Dart and the Cloud Functions team is that there's no resources to learn from. And I'm guessing this is due to the fact that they don't have a dedicated team for these projects. It's a little bit better than the shelf package given the examples that's provided, but there is a major lack of documentation. The framework and its interface is tight enough though that you can figure out what to do, but there's still so little docs that going anywhere meaningful outside of running a single function will leave you stuck to figure out everything for yourself, especially if you don't have any backend experience. This leaves you in the same place as the the shelf package or well, kind of with questions like how do I structure my code how do I do dependency injection can I use long-running services can I set up a queuing infrastructure those questions are quite difficult to figure out unless you have experience in backend and server style development the next two are probably going to be the most popular options by far so let's move on to the first one which is server pod this is the flutter focused backend framework 
where all the other options in the list is focused on Dart, this package is focused on Flutter development. It's got the most hype behind it and has been funded recently so you can expect a lot of development and improvements from it. The first pro is that it's easy to get started. You have a dedicated CLI to set up your server and get running immediately. It has server monitoring with a dedicated app to monitor your performance, your requests, your timing. It has a logging infrastructure with a dedicated UI to search through the logs on your server. It has built-in caching, which is high performance and distributed. It has a built-in ORM, so you can use statically typed and null save data to talk to your database. There's additional features like health checks, task scheduling, data streaming, basically all the features that you'd want. The third pro is that it's very beginner friendly. So if you're not familiar with hosting your own server or backend in general, this is a good option to get started if you want to write a backend in Dart. And the fourth pro, which is their most promoted feature, is that for every endpoint you set up, the code for the Flutter project is automatically generated. This means when you are calling your backend function, it feels like you're just calling a normal function that's in your Flutter project. Now, some of the cons that I picked up is that it requires additional dependencies on your machine just to get started. So you need to have Docker, Postgres, and Redis installed to configure your server pod project. The second con, which I think will be the one that pushes a lot of beginners away, is that there's a lot of moving parts to keep in your mental model. What that means is with all the features this brings along, it's hard to dampen the complexity for a first time user of the framework. There are schema files, YAML files, generated files, generated code, generated models. It's not as simple as the functions framework or our last package on this list. And the biggest con that I have found from it and why I'm not choosing this package is it's not clear how testable this is. From what I see, it doesn't look like it's testable at all. And even if it is testable, there's no documentation that allows you to learn how to set up testing for your project. Moving on to the last, but definitely not the least option, is Dart Frog. This is a minimalist backend framework for Dart. It's built by the Very Good Ventures team and they always put out amazing work because their projects and the products that they built are based on what they are actually building in the real world for their clients. So let's jump into some of the pros. Simplicity. Having a simple way to define your routes and organize your code is a big help especially for getting into the framework. The second pro is a custom entry point. This allows you to define your own entry point, which means that you can define your own startup logic before the server starts. So I'm going to talk about it a little bit later in one of my cons. It's testable out of the box for all your major functionalities. So the routes are defined as simple functions, which makes unit testing quite easy. In addition to the easy setup, they have good documentation to get you started with writing your unit tests. It has good support from the community and Flutter. Craig from the Flutter DevRel team has already done two streams using .frog, which is usually a good sign for a package. And the last pro is that it has final phase guides. There's actual official docs of how to deploy to the most popular platforms. Now on to the cons. In some cases, simplicity sacrifice software engineering principles. In the case of Dart Frog, this means that everything for the route is in one file and one function. To promote the single responsibility principle for the routes or even just the route handlers, the function for the HTTP message should be separate, meaning a separate function for the get, post, delete, and the update. Making the mechanism too simple at this level means developers bear the complexity in their own code base. The function will end up being extremely large and have up to five execution paths within it. This eventually causes maintainability to deteriorate for the route handlers as they grow larger to handle more functionality. The next con is an opinionated view, but I dislike the dependency injection mechanism. Adding dependencies through middleware and the request context now suddenly turns the request context into an IOC container. In addition to that, it asks the user to roll their own singleton or factory style setup 
by nature of how it's implemented. I believe these should be separate as well. This is where the custom entry point pro comes in that I spoke about earlier. The way I would use this is by using something like get it, passing the locator through the context and then using that in the function. This would give us a dedicated locator for our dependency which we can mock out separately to the middleware and request context. If you made it to this point, remember to leave a comment below but put a snorkel emoji in your comment so that I know that you watched until the end of this video. I'll be using the questions that you leave below in the topics for my next casual dart videos.